So when I wake up, I like to have my coffee first thing in the morning. I normally use the Keurig. The problem is there's not really a smart assistant controlled coffee maker on the market. I can't use Alexa or Google to turn my coffee maker on in the morning. I don't use a full pot coffee maker because I just need one cup for myself. This can be a dangerous product. Not only are you working with electricity, we're talking about line voltage, 120 volts AC if you're in the States, you're also dealing with a pressure vessel. So these single shot coffee makers use a small pressure vessel in order to make the coffee quickly. Part of this project, we're taking apart some of the mechanical structure around that pressure vessel. How I did my project is gonna be a little bit different depending on what kind of single shot coffee maker you have. Whether it's a Keurig or any of the generic single shots, you're going to need to be very careful about respecting that pressure vessel because it can blow up on. Once everything came in, the first step was testing the new Keurig to make sure that everything worked right out of the box. Next thing I did was a full teardown of the working Keurig. After I had the Keurig apart, I worked through the sequence of operations manually. This served two important purposes. The first was a sanity check. Having taken everything apart, I wanted to make sure everything still worked. The second purpose, and the most important, is that manually moving through the processes that a coffee maker would do, pressing the buttons, closing the contactors as if I closed the lid, I can understand what inputs the controller on board is looking for in order to normally operate the coffee machine. This pre-work is super important because whenever you go to program something, you're introducing a new computer into the system, you wanna understand how does it work in a very precise manner. Whether you're automating a robot or automating a coffee maker, you need to know how it operates and if at all possible, do it on the original machine. If you can't do that, simulate it. Draw it out on a piece of paper or use a scale model and step through the process yourself and kind of see where the hiccups are. So once I tested the Keurig after it had been taken apart, the next step was to take all the measurements with my aluminum stock so that I could build out a frame for the project. Now for this project, I specifically wanted a frame that I could mount all the components out and see everything working and make it easy for me to hack with, right? You might choose to go to something completely different for aesthetic purposes. Mine was very utilitarian and that reflects the goals of this project, you might go with something that has a little bit better fit and finish, just depending on what you're trying to do. So the next step was to cut my aluminum stock to size to build out the frame I wanted for the project.
this point, my friend LeVar came over and started helping me with the code while I was working on understanding the electronics and getting everything wired up inside of the frame. This was awesome because not only did it help me move to finish the project sooner, but it's always a good time to be working in the shop with a friend. Now, when we went to run the code, it was working kind of some of the time, but there was a lot of bugs and I couldn't at first understand why. This is one of those situations where your code might all be right from a compiler's perspective, but you might have a runtime error. Runtime errors come in a lot of different varieties. Usually it has to do with the logic of your code. Everything compiles, everything runs, everything executes, but your code isn't doing what it's supposed to do. In this case, we were under the assumption that the microcontroller was looking for that 5 volt input as a logic high. What was really happening is the controller was looking for a logic low. It took a little while to troubleshoot, took a little while to figure out. The next thing I tried to do was build a transistor circuit to basically switch ground for the microcontroller. The problem I ran into is even though the transistors read ground across them, and if I use a multimeter check across, I would say nominally zero ohms, the microcontroller wouldn't read that input as a true zero volt for the logic low. Since I had a loose relay shield for an Arduino, I just plugged that on because that gives you a, a literal mechanical concept contact metal on metal to where the circuit is guaranteed to see the actual ground and it worked. The next step after that was debugging the Arduino code, working on the timing between each section so that once you hit a button, how long should you wait until you close the lid, which tripped out the contact switch, how long before you tell it that the water's full, how long between you move between each of these sections to tell the coffee maker that you're done with this part as you go along. So the way I integrated in the smart plug to the Arduino was by using the five volt rail off of a USB phone charger. You can do this with any 5 volt power supply. It's super common with USB devices. So once you have the smart plug integrated into your home network, plugged in, using whatever the smart assistant of your choice is. For me, that's Google Assistant. You might use Alexa. All you have to do at that point is say, okay, Google or Alexa, turn on whatever the name of your plug is. And then that 5 volt will go high and your Arduino is now connected to that 5 volt and can read it in and know that you're trying to start your program. This is a quick and easy way to make your Arduino projects internet capable. And it's also very good because you don't have to worry about all the infrastructure doing voice recognition and sending remote requests and uh, making all of that other process work. This is a good way to have proof of concept that your device can take a remote trigger and then cycle through the code that you want it to. So once I got everything integrated in, it took a couple cycles of troubleshooting to receive the request, process through it effectively, and then make a cup of coffee. Okay, Google, turn on the coffee maker. Okay, turning on the coffee maker. So working with the Arduino and the smart plug is stage one. Ideally, you'd be able to process your web requests natively within your code. The way I see it going next is either using something like an ESP32, a Raspberry Pi, or Arduino clone that's Wi-Fi capable, like a wildfire, and natively processing an HTTP request into the logic of the coffee maker. There's a full article about this project with pictures on my website that'll walk you through how to do this step by step, and also include a full bill of materials so that you can buy everything you need uh, to get up and running. Great, so I hope you have a fun time working on your project. If you have any recommendations on ways to make this better or things I should do next, please feel free to leave a comment. If you like what I'm doing, leave a like on the video, subscribe. If not, I understand. Thanks for watching.